Are you thinking about building a fire pit? Are you thinking about making it smokeless? Have you watched a couple other videos and haven't really found the video that you want to build your fireplace like? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how I built this smokeless fire pit and had almost all the parts delivered to my house for about $300. So stay tuned. What's going on guys? Welcome to the Dude's Garage. My name is Matt. I'm just a dude. And before we get too far into this video, if you can like and subscribe, it would definitely help out the channel and be greatly appreciated. Thank you. In this video, I'm going to go over what parts I ordered, why I ordered them, how I built this, and things I would do differently. So let's start out with the parts. Everybody's trying to build something that represents the store-bought smokeless fire pits. Measurements on the store-bought smokeless fire pits are they're narrow and they're tall to allow the wood to be condensed within the fire and then allow the sides to get heated up to cause that secondary burn. Some of the builds that I've seen on YouTube, to me it's, it seems like the pit is too big. What I want to do is I wanted to find a kit that not only was pretty much all there, I didn't have to go buy parts, it was narrow and it was cheap. What I ended up getting was a pavestone, rumblestone, round fire pit number one and I ordered this because one it was you can find the kits for under 200 bucks and Home Depot didn't charge me anything to have this delivered to my house which is a definite plus but also like to mention that Home Depot, Pavestone or any other brands that are mentioned in this video are not sponsors and did not pay for this video in any way besides being extremely affordable the Pavestone kit was also designed in a way which would make the building of this smokeless fire pit super easy or easier and we'll get into that a little bit later the inside measurements about 32 inches a little bit less than 32 inches and the outside measurement is a little less than 46 inches so it's not a giant fire pit kit it's narrow and condensed which is what I was looking for the second thing I ended up purchasing was a pleasant hearth fire pit steel insert now this steel insert measures 29 inches inside diameter, 30 inches outside diameter, and I believe it's 33 and a half inches to the outside lip portion of the fire pit insert, which would allow this just to be set inside of the fire pit kit, and it would have about an inch on each side or around it to allow the air to come in, get heated up, and cause that secondary burn. Rumblestone fire pit kit number one has got 36 of what they call the trap stones and then 36 of the mini looks like little brick stones there's 12 of each on each tier of of the fire pit i wanted to add one more tier i wanted to get this about 14 to 15 inches tall but to get the number two which is another set of bricks was about between six and seven hundred dollars which i thought was a little a little pricey at this time 2021 uh, some building materials are a little harder to come by than others and it seems these concrete blocks are one of those materials that are hard to come by. The cafe kit which I ended up purchasing was readily available. Other colors, the Sierra Blend and I believe there's a couple other colors, they're hit and miss whether stores have them, whether they're back ordered, you can order them so you just have to look around a little bit and find out. What I was able to purchase were the Pavestone retaining wall trapezoid stones and I was able to find these in Sierra blend which is a different color but I don't think it looks that bad when it's completed these were about two dollars per stone and I needed 12 of them for about twenty four dollars I was able to add another tier to this fire pit stones are close but they're a little bit different and what matters to me was the outside measurement was the same but the inside the bricks were a little bit narrower and the uh, angles were less, which isn't a big deal because I'll show you how I worked around that. But these did have a little lip on it, which I chose to break off with the claw end of a hammer. A couple wax, knock it off, done deal. Did that on 12 bricks. I also ended up purchasing a bag of leveling sand and two bags of lava rocks. That's all the stuff I needed. So let's go on with the build. The first thing I had to do was since the retaining wall stones were different diameter than the traps that came with the rumble stone kit, I first built 
the first row with all the blocks from the Rumblestone kit. And that would give me an outside diameter or an outside perimeter which I can mark out with a piece of chalk, which I did. Once I had the outside perimeter marked with a piece of chalk, I took all the stones out and I assembled the stainless steel uh, fire pit insert which came with the Rumblestone kit. Now this is just a stainless steel snap together kit. It um, went together pretty easily and it's made to sit on the top part of the fire pit but I'm going to use it a little bit differently since we added a brick to the bottom we're going to need something to fill the gap between the bottom and the top since the Pleasant Hearth fire pit insert is only 10 inches deep. We're going to need about another three and a half to four inches to make up for that so we're going to use this. So I turn it upside down and place it in the center of that chalk marking. The next thing I did was place sand on the first layer where the bricks are going to start going. Now I did this because the lip of that stainless steel insert sits off of the ground probably about a sixteenth of an inch. It's not much but it is enough to send the bricks or the pavers or the retaining wall blocks out of level and if you send that out of level it's not, it, the rest of the build is not going to work out right. So I used some sand to level out that and so the bricks would have a solid place to sit on. If you're just putting this in the ground already on top of sand, I don't think this would be necessary since you can maybe recess that a little bit and put, put the bricks on top of that. Once I had the stainless steel fire pit insert on the ground with the sand on top of it, I took the retaining wall blocks and I put them where I marked out with chalk where the trap blocks from the pavestone kit went. Once I had all this, now it was time to just start putting blocks on top of blocks. If you're able to find the pavestone traps that come with the Rumblestone Fire Pit Place Kit, you're only going to need 12 of them. And I put the model numbers or the SKU numbers that, that are needed for the different colors from Pavestone in the description below. If you can find those, then this is going to be a lot easier because this design, like I was telling you before, goes trap, small brick, trap, small brick, trap, small brick, all the way around in a circle. Have that first layer built you just remove the small bricks. Now you have your intake holes or your vent holes at the bottom of the fire pit, which allows the air to come in. They are all evenly spaced around the fire pit and uniform. Once I had that first layer set, it was time to start building the rest of the fire pit. What I did was I took the, the mini blocks or the square blocks and I put them in the middle of the uh, retaining wall stones and then I put a trap in between that. So the trap is spanning the distance between the vent holes on the bottom. And then another mini block and then a trap all the way around. And then I did that for three levels. When assembling this, Pavestone recommends using a masonry adhesive. I'll put a recommendation for an adhesive from Home Depot in the description below. I chose not to use a masonry adhesive for this project because I'm going to disassemble and reassemble this in another area once I get my patio completed. Once all the blocks are put together and the fire pit is built, it goes together pretty easily and you don't have to break anything or cut any blocks in half. It's a pretty easy build. The hardest part from building this kit was moving the blocks from the front of the house to the back of the house. Once the blocks are in place, it's time to drill the holes for the upper vents in the fire pit in, or the steel fire pit insert. To do this, I used a 7 8 hole saw. The Pleasant Hearth comes packaged in four pieces that you have to assemble. But the way I placed these was I took a piece of tape and I put it on a quarter piece of the panel just to get the distance. Once I had that distance set out or what that measurement is from end to end on that panel, I ripped the tape off and then I laid it on it on the table and I took a tape measure and I marked an inch and a quarter apart on center and then I put that tape back on top and then I use a center punch and I've just put a center punch at the bottom of each line and there was my markings for the center of the holes at inch and a quarter on center. Once I had these holes marked out it was pretty easy going. I just put the fire pit insert on my drill press and I just drilled the holes out where the marks were. To make your drill bit or your tools or cutting tools last a little bit longer Use a cutting tool oil or a cutting tool coolant. This will give your cutting tools a larger lifespan and make them more efficient because it keeps the metal cool and the tool cool when you're doing the cutting. If you don't have a drill press, don't worry. You can do this by hand, which a cutting tool coolant will, or a cutting tool oil will definitely come in handy because it will make cutting those pieces a lot easier. 
Once all the holes were, were drilled out, I used a rag with some acetone on it to wipe down the oil or the cutting tool fluid from on the fire pit insert. You want to wipe this down and clean it off. It will eventually burn off, but it's going to cause some black smoke when you first get started, and you want to avoid that. Also, I used a grinder with a flap disc to round off the edges so there weren't any sharp edges around the hole where the hole saw punched through the steel. The steel insert is all clean. Paint it with high heat spray paint to make it look a lot cleaner and get a little more life out of it because no bare steel is going to be exposed to the elements. To set this upper ring inside of the lower ring, you're going to need to persuade it a little bit due to the fact that even though that outer ring or that the ring on the bottom, the stainless steel ring measures 31 inches. It's octagonal. So it's 31 in one space and 29 and a half in another. So you're going to have to persuade it a little bit to get this upper ring inside of it. And to persuade it, I used a four pound sledgehammer. I just put my knee on the bricks, held them in place and hit it a couple times. Now this did separate a panel a little bit, which I just put a brick in the hole to help slow that air from just sucking right into the bottom of the fire. Once that lower ring was persuaded enough to let that upper ring fit inside of it, it fit super easy. Now it's time to add the lava rock. But first, before I did that, I took two of the leftover paved stone mini blocks and I put them on each side to block up the hole where the ring separated from getting hit with a hammer. I did this to help slow down all the air from rushing from the bottom vents inside the lower portion of the fire and not making its way up to the top of the steel ring for the secondary burn. After this is in place, all I did was take two bags of lava rocks, put them on the bottom, and then just kind of leveled them out a little bit with my hands. Now I use lava rocks, you want something big, you don't want to use sand because you want to be able to, for the fire to get oxygen up underneath it as well. Now if you look at a store bought smokeless fire pit, they have tons of vent holes in the bottom tons. They want to keep that fire well oxygenated so it burns efficiently. You want to keep that fire in a, in a closer container, or keep that fire more contained so it gets hotter, gets the size of that fireplace hotter to allow for that secondary burn. So hopefully this 29 inch fire compartment, this 29 by 14, 15 inch fire compartment is good enough to create the secondary burn. Once everything was built, it it was time to try it out. I just put some some wood in there and a little bit of a teepee and lit on fire and it worked great. Now this fire pit isn't 100% smokeless. It does 100% smoke less than what I had before, which was just a typical store-bought um, patio fireplace. Pretty cheap. Uh, worked good, made fires, made tons of smoke, but this definitely works a lot better. I did make a couple mistakes starting the fire. The fire I started was above the secondary burn holes which created a little bit more smoke because wood was above, the burning material was above that secondary burn. Once it kind of crumbled and fell down it burned a lot cleaner and a lot hotter. If I were to build this again, the first thing I wouldn't do is I wouldn't use the holes an inch and a quarter on center. I would make them two inches on center. I just think inch and a quarter was too close together to really get those that second that hot secondary burn. It works great, don't get me wrong, but to get that hot secondary burn, I think you need to spread the holes out a little farther apart. I would try two inches on center. I hope you like this video and I hope it helps you out. If you could like and subscribe, like I said before, it would definitely help out the channel and be greatly appreciated. My name is Matt, I'm just a dude. If I can't fix it, I'll fix it so no one else can. Thanks for watching.